Tonight, a young man from Montsepa is the latest victim of gun violence. His family is terrified and perplexed following the shooting. A recent discovery of a fetus in the community of Pauli Soufre is raising questions about whether there is adequate reproductive health and sex education being taught. And Senator Gibeon Ferdinand adds his voice to the debate about the Education Ministry's move to abolish corporal punishment. So there has to be a gradual move um, from what we used to do to what we need to do. The details are coming up. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovely and Amy Joseph. Good evening. It is Thursday, the 28th of February, 2019. Welcome to the Hot 7 Nightly News on Flow Channel 117, KISS FM 105.5 and 105.9, www.caribbeanhottv.com and on the Caribbean Hot FM mobile app. I am Lovely St. Amy Joseph. Thank you for joining us. A shooting has left one man fighting for his life and a family fearing for theirs. The victim's family says the incident is a real mystery to them. Rochelle Gonzalez begins our report. A family and an entire community has been scared quiet following the brutal shooting of one man in his own home. Left to fight for his life is 29-year-old Robert Stanley of Monsepa, who was shot in the head as he lay on his couch Wednesday night. Shortly after learning about the shooting, Hot 7 News sought answers to piece together what transpired. However, the news team were either given the silent treatment or were met by persons claiming to know nothing. Eventually, information was received that Stanley's mother, Petra Bihari, was in the Victoria Hospital waiting to hear the fate of her son. Upon arrival at VH, Bihari refused to speak to the team on the record out of fear of reprisal by the still unknown assailants. However, she gave details off the record. She said at the time of the incident, around 11.30 p.m., everyone else was already in bed fast asleep. This was when she claimed to have heard around four gunshots ringing inside the house. Bihari said herself and her daughters rushed out to find Stanley laying in the same position with his toddler lying on his chest, initially thinking he was asleep. It wasn't until moments later that one of her daughters saw the blood and they called emergency services. Luckily, she said, the baby was asleep in another room and went to lay on the father after being wakened by the gunshots. Bihari said the incident has left her family shaken and mystified as to who would harm her son and why. She said he is a reserved individual and stays away from trouble. She also said her family has no issues with anyone from the area. When asked how the assailant entered the house, she said it was most likely done through a window which they found broken. His condition at the time while speaking to her was unknown. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Michelle Gonzalez. This is Hot 7 Breaking News. Now for this breaking news update to a story that Hot 7 News brought you on Tuesday. The family of Engelbert Joseph, whose body was found on Wednesday, has demanded answers from the Mental Wellness Center, and it seems the facility has heeded the call. Executive Director of the National Mental Wellness Center, Jennifer Forrester, issued a statement on the matter late Thursday. On behalf of the staff and the management of the National Mental Wellness Center, I wish to extend my sincere condolences to the family of Mr. Angelbert Joseph, who was a patient of the facility. On Sunday, very late into the evening, we discovered that Mr. Joseph was missing from his ward. Upon realizing that the patient was missing, the protocol that is in place at the facility was activated. The protocol is the police were informed, the family was informed, and a search was conducted after the alarm was raised. After a thorough search of the compound of the National Mental Wellness Center, Mr. Joseph was not found. On Wednesday of this week, we received word that Mr. Joseph was found and he was deceased. At the facility, what we are doing currently, we are reviewing all of our security measures we have in place to protect the staff and patients. And we are seeking to strengthen what we currently have in place. 
I wish again to take this opportunity on behalf of the management of the National Mental Wellness Center and by extension, the Department of Health and Wellness, our sincerest condolences to the family of the bereaved. Joseph, who was better known as Lara, had been taken to the Mental Wellness Center by his brother on Friday. During their search for Lara from Sunday into Wednesday, the family said they had gotten very little information or assistance from the facility. We will continue to follow this story. Over to you, lovely. This is Hot 7 Breaking News. The recent discovery of a fetus in the community of Palmis Soufre has raised questions of whether or not proper sex education occurs on the island. A representative of family planning assures that the information needed to make informed sexual decisions is easier than ever to access. Solange Alfred reports. Pregnancy, whether planned or unplanned, can seem like a daunting challenge. There are currently no legal options for terminating unwanted pregnancies in St. Lucia unless the woman's health is at risk from the pregnancy. However, that does not mean that the criminal act of abortion does not take place. A recent discovery of a human fetus, estimated to be about eight weeks old, in Palmas Soufre left many shocked. Information regarding the discarded fetus is still unknown and currently no arrests have been made regarding the matter. Staff member at Planned Parenthood Patricia Bissett Modest affirmed that sufficient options exist within the framework of Planned Parenthood that should counteract the criminal action of abortion. As you know, St. Lucia abortion is illegal, okay? And we don't perform abortion at Planned Parenthood. What we do, we sit with them and we counsel them, okay? We get free counseling at Planned Parenthood and we give them option, okay? Whether to carry the baby full, full term, nine months, and whether you want to give it at, on, um, um, <coughs> how do you say it, um, adoption. So whether you want it or not. And sometimes when you give them time to think, they come back and they tell you, I will keep the baby. We said Morda stated, that the conversation of sex is one that may seem difficult to have with adolescents. However, she is of the opinion that it is a necessary conversation. When the questions are coming, the children are asking, the children are open, they are asking questions. And the thing is, the questions they are asking, you have to give them the answer. Don't shy away. Give them the answer. They, they want information. They want you to feed them with the information. So, and most times, in the school, they know. It's not that they do not know. They know. And sometimes they know more than you that coming and tell them. Okay? So what you... Then they, all you have to do, guide them. And give them the factual information so that they can make a responsible decision about themselves. St. Lucia Planned Parenthood remains dedicated to providing quality reproductive health care services to St. Lucians of all ages, gender, and sexual orientation. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solaj Alfred. Are we moving in the right direction with the proposed abolition of corporal punishment come 2020? Former principal of the Miku Secondary School and Senator Gibeon Ferdinand is weighing in on the discussion. The member of the Senate is of the opinion that the promotion of corrective behavior should be the focus of the nation rather than punitive measures. The Ministry of Education defended the move to eradicate corporal punishment from the St. Lucia school system by May 2020, stating that the move will ensure the fulfillment of a mandate set out by the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child to Protect Students. Since this announcement was made earlier this week, many have added their voice to this hot-button topic. Former principal of the Mikud Secondary School, Gibeon Ferdinand, expressed his concern in regards to the proper framework that will eventually govern corrective action. My experience as a, as a teacher, a, a principal, uh, an educator, I think it's more about corrective um, behavior rather than punitive. And so we need to find ways to empower children and the legislation as it is as reflected in the Education Act does provide for corporal punishment to be administered. But if we're going to be signing on to um, major international um, agreements and treaties and um, that reflect a move away from it, I think we need to be, as a, as a country, as a society, we need to evolve. And so we have to embrace methods of 
dealing with deviant behavior methods of what we call discipline in a more um, holistic way. Meanwhile, Ferdinand spoke in his capacity as a member of parliament. He noted that a level of clarity is needed on the position that the island wishes to take on corporal punishment and that St. Lucia should be guided by a level of tradition without moving away from tried and true practices. I believe that countries like ours, so developing countries, we need to be able to, to legislate clearly what our position is about um, the way we deal with corporal punishment. Our policy should reflect that we are forward thinking and that we are prepared to embrace practices that are in keeping with child's, um, child rights, um, children's, there's something that we, we, we now refer, refer to as child friendly school environments. We need to embrace those types of policies but at the same time we should not move away too quickly from what we know uh, traditionally has worked. So there has to be a gradual move um, from what we used to do to what we need to do. And that has to be reflected in our policies. So if there is going to be an abolition of corporal punishment or any of those, um, our policies must reflect it and our practices will then follow what our policies say. Ferdinand is of the opinion that currently the Education Act of St. Lucia does not sufficiently address corrective disciplinary action, which he believes should be the starting point of change for discipline within the education system. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solaj Alfred. The Department of Infrastructure, along with the Department of Transport and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, are implementing a traffic flow improvement program to improve the travel time along the castries Grosely Highway. Various traffic control interventions are being implemented at key parts of the highway. Upon successful implementation, it is estimated that a reduction of 15 to 20 minutes in travel time could be achieved, thus improving the traffic experience for more than 27,000 daily commuters. Rochelle Gonzalez tells us more. The Department of Infrastructure, along with the Department of Transport and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, are implementing a Traffic Flow Improvement Program, TFIP, to improve the travel time along the castries Groselay Highway. As a result, various traffic control interventions are being implemented at key parts on the highway. Upon successful implementation, it is estimated that a reduction of 15 to 20 minutes in travel time could be achieved, thus improving the traffic experience for more than 27,000 average daily commuters. A three-month pilot is currently in motion focusing on minimizing traffic interruptions by closing the entry into the Windward Island Gases Road, preventing vehicles from using the junction as a bypass. This has been selected as the focus of the pilot due to frequent traffic entering and exiting the secondary junctions, which are within close proximity to the highway, thus interrupting the main traffic flow on the castries Grosley Highway. This interruption is at its worst when there is a high volume of vehicles during travel peak hours. Therefore, the pilot phase will focus on weekly morning peak hours of 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. The pilot phase aims to minimize traffic interruptions by closing entry and exit from secondary junctions and redivert traffic into primary roads during peak hours. Traffic control signs will be erected and there will be increased enforcement over a period of 8 to 12 weeks in conjunction with the pilot phase. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez. You're watching the Hot 7 TV nightly news still to come. The Castries Mayor gives full support to the implementation of dress codes for the public by various agencies. The public has its say on the new dress code trend and the opposition is crying foul over the manner in which information was relayed in regards to activities for Independence 40. These stories and more after the break.